channel if you're new here my name is Karen we're in the car obviously and I've got you kind of like propped up hopefully nothing falls <laughs> I'm on my way to Kohl's I'm going to a Christmas party at my church tonight and as my family and I were talking at the dinner table last night my husband was saying what are you gonna wear he was reminding me that last year people were pretty dressed up and I was like oh crap <laughs> Because, as you probably know, unless you're new, I have been on a weight loss journey. And let's just say, I'm significantly different in size. Not that I even ever really had a lot of dress clothes. So, because my size has been changing every, it's slower now, but every couple of months, I have one pair of jeans that are in my size. I wear them. And then when I have my pajamas on at night is when I wash them so that they're ready to be worn. So I don't have any dress pants. The only dresses I have are two sundresses I bought over the summer. And even those, if I put, I don't even know if that would work, but a sweater over them, they're too big too. So I'm heading out. I'm going to Kohl's because I did buy a dress there in the spring when I went to a wedding and they had high-waisted dresses I am high-waisted so the Empire kind of waist is what's best for me or a miracle could strike the world and I could find a pair of black pants there that look good on me um, yeah I'm kind of picky which makes it hard I'm also high-waisted and I get the back gap super easy on pants so a lot of you gave me great recommendations for jeans I thank you so much I'll be using all those recommendations but for now I need to find something that looks nice so I'm a little nervous I don't even know what size I am I still have the anxiety of shopping outside of the plus size world uh, now that I'm not using food as a painkiller though, I'm feeling all the feels so I thought you know what? I'm gonna share this with my friends as I share with people I find out that I'm not the only one and that many of us feel the exact same way So this is your friend coming to you I'm trying to get rid of shame I've always kept my weight very quiet because of shame and guilt and I'm learning through coaching that I can talk about it that people are sweet about it and honestly that no matter whether you are 10 pounds overweight 200 pounds overweight a lot of us have many of the same insecurities it's hard to love your body it just is so obesity sucks it sucks and I hate it and I there's a lot I hate about it and the world that it threw me into so I first remember being aware of my weight at about 11 years old I had gotten to 101 pounds and because none of my other friends were over a hundred pounds I felt really big and I remember asking a friend do I need to lose weight and she was like well maybe a little bit and for some reason this got this in my head and honestly I feel like over the years I have become or I became the person that I thought I was in my head my mindset was just awful so I was in my mid-20s though when I really, really gained weight. I was like a, about 150, 155 pounds in high school, which also I felt very ashamed about. I thought it would be really helpful to me and encouraging to many of you if I went through all the things I really hate about obesity. So I'm going to give you my top 10, I can't take my hand off the wheel, <laughs> my top 10 reasons that I hate obesity, okay? Number 10, everything about going to the doctors. You would think that as an obese woman, that's a health problem, and you would think that going to the doctor would feel accessible and it absolutely does not feel accessible first of all 
there are so many doctors out there that do not even have a Johnny that is going to fit a plus size woman. And when I injured my knee in April, and I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys, but the intake nurse, she did my weight and everything, and she brought in this pair of Johnny material. Not, I th actually, they're probably paper. I don't know, paper shorts. And I just said, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I'm at my most vulnerable. My knee's injured. I get it. You know, the inference of if you weren't overweight, you wouldn't hurt your knee. It's probably true. I've been working really hard that week. I was traveling, and I wanted to have videos up while I was gone, so I was extra time decluttering and working. Anyway, so I just was like, again, I'm just going to be honest with her. And I go, those are not going to fit me. And she looks at me. She goes, well, this is what they want you to wear. And I go, well, I can't wear it if it doesn't fit. And she goes, they're an extra large like that. They're an extra large. And she leaves the room. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? Well, I had worn these. Um, they're like loungewear. I had worn loungewear pants that I got at Target. Because I knew I could pull those things all the way up to my crotch if I had to. And so I knew that I could be examined, my knee could be examined with my own pants on. So I just didn't even touch those things. And when the doctor came in, I said, I didn't put those on. I know they're not going to fit me. And I wore these because I knew that you could examine my knee with them on. And she was like, oh yeah, she was so sweet about it. She goes, I don't even know why they give you those. So she was super sweet about it. But I'm telling you, going to the doctor, and then there's the shame of getting on the scale, the conversations, looking, you know, seeing them right, right in front of you. Words like morbidly obese. Seriously, does it have to have the word morbid in it? I just, in all the years of political correctness, that's the best we got, is morbidly obese. So I hate going to the doctor. That's one thing I hate about obesity. Number nine, the paranoia of eating in public, in front of people, and worrying about whether or not they're judging what you put on your plate. And you know, I think moments that's real where people maybe are judging what you put on your plate or in your grocery cart at the store and moments where it's not real and I it's up here and I'm judging myself so that's something I hate eating in public then the, the paranoia that goes with that number eight which kind of goes with it going to parties and people's homes and feeling like you're taking up too much space you know, there'll be like home sale parties where everyone's trying to find a seat in the same room and it's like a race to get there and get a seat where you can be as least conspicuous as possible or finding a chair that's comfortable um, with back issues, you know, you don't want to be on a straight back chair or a folding chair. So just that whole and you're at or you're at a dining room table that's close to the wall and you're against the wall the back wall and you need to get out of the room and you know it's absolutely impossible to squeeze by anybody without getting the whole road to get up and let you out <laughs> so you can either get what you need or use the bathroom or whatever so that's number eight and i hate it and kind of along with being with friends is carpooling to events when you're obese. So let's say you're going to a ladies retreat and you're all going in a van and you know that getting in the back back of that van is not a good idea. And then there's the whole feeling of you know they're sensing that too and so everybody offers you the front seat because they're sweet but you feel bad because they have to sit in the back back or you end up in a back seat and the seat belt isn't big enough for you so you're in a state like Maine where it's mandatory that you wear a seat belt and there's that whole issue so carpooling is definitely one of the reasons I hate obesity. Number five. Oh, no, number six. <laughs> Carpooling was number seven. Number six is plus size clothes. I hate plus size clothes. 
I'm not saying there's no cute plus size quilts out there and it's definitely better now than when it when I was younger and for some reason everybody thought it'd be a great idea to put mirrors on your clothes <laughs> and they would outline it would look like sparkle glue or some stupid thing like what who wants mirrors on their clothes but I hate plus size clothes because the necklines are always huge on me and a lot of times it's like high-waisted and then poofs out so you look pregnant and when I was younger I always had people asking me if I was pregnant oh that was fun I also hate a lot of times it's like I'm just trying to find something that fits my body I don't even have the hope that I'm gonna like it and so Either I hate the color or it looks ugly on me or you know I'm trying to get something like that's not like has sleeves there's just so many issues that you end up buying stuff that you don't even like just because it fits your body and I remember telling my husband don't ever judge a woman who's plus size by her clothing don't ever think that she doesn't have good style she's got good style she just can't find anything it's that struggle is real my friends real so I hate plus size clothing and along with plus size clothing is I hate the price tag on the clothing that you have to buy ah my goodness going into Lane Bryant it's a $75 sweater that's not gonna last any longer than a $20 sweater at Walmart it's gonna pill up on you nothing there lasts any longer than any cheap shirt anywhere else so I hate the exorbitant price that I have to pay to have clothing when I am going to plus size stores. And as I said, it is getting better, but the, one of the problems with going to Walmart, Target, it's not that they don't have anything, or um, Old Navy, I just realized that Old Navy has plus size. I didn't even know it before, but I guess they weren't always having it in the stores. So even though they carried it, they didn't carry it in the stores. And if there's anybody who needs to try clothes on before they bring them home, it is a plus size woman because there's lumps and bumps in different places for each different person, the way that your body has gained weight, and you literally need to see that garment on you. I hate plus size clothes. Okay, number four. This was a big one for me, especially when I injured my knee, but it's been a big one for me as I travel to see my son who lives far away, is airline travel as a plus size person. Oh my goodness you're always worried like about whoever's gonna be beside you are you infringing on their seat are they thinking that they have to sit with the fat lady it's awful and I did learn to always take the aisle seat when you plan out you know go on and plan out it used to be bad like flying with Southwest because you just stand in line according to your letter of when you um, signed in or got your boarding pass online so you just couldn't control that all the time whereas now flying you know you're always kind of picking which seat you're in even though sometimes you can get there and they'll change it definitely wouldn't want to be in the middle would prefer the aisle because at least you can kind of lean <laughs> toward the aisle uh, and even going through the aisles to get to your seat feel like you're bumping people and then you didn't know it they switched out your airplane and so it's one of those tiny ones that you just you can't barely get in and the seats are more narrow it's just a nightmare it's a nightmare um, and along with that which would actually be number three because it's so terrible that it needs its own number and that is having to add, oh, and by the way, I don't wanna buy two seats. I can't afford to buy two seats. And if I have to buy two seats, I can't travel. Just saying, I, I, I couldn't buy two seats. Okay, speaking of airlines, having to ask for a seat belt extender. I hate asking for a seat belt extender. So you ask for the seat belt extender. Very rarely are they discreet about it. Usually they're like, sure, I can give you a seat belt extender, 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 extender. 
<laughs> and you're holding up the line while they look for, oh where is that is that up front or is that in the back and all that so sometimes they'll give it to you there sometimes they realize that it's not where it's supposed to be so now they got to go hunt for it for them for it I'm assuming they have more than one so they tell you they'll bring it to you which they may or may not do they might bring it to you or they might not bring it to you one time when they didn't bring it to me I just made it look like my seatbelt was buckled and I did not wear a seatbelt for that flight and then see this I brought it with me so I could show you you know what that is? Yeah, you do. It's a seatbelt extender. Because in uh, online research, I realized, hey, you can buy a seatbelt extender, and then I can put it in my pocketbook. And I must have looked up one for the airline I was flying on that time, because I do remember it worked for me once. And then the next time I flew, I must have chosen a different airline, because the next time it didn't work. So then I had the embarrassment of um, looking that thing up, and it doesn't end up working, and then I have to ask for a seatbelt extender anyway. So yeah, seatbelt extenders. So number two is my own mobility. Having limitations to my mobility. I now have two herniated discs in my back. One of my knees has no um, ACL. I'm assuming the meniscus and the MCL heel that was torn. So I'm feeling so much better. I mean, I can trot down the stairs now with the weight loss. So my own mobility, huge issue. And honestly, the embarrassment of the way I would go up and down stairs, step up, join your feet, step up, join your feet, step down, join your feet, step down, join your feet. It just, you know, you're walking around so limited. And if I had a different type of abnormality or uh, limitation, it wouldn't bother me so much, but really in my heart of hearts, knowing it was because of my weight made it more embarrassing because of the guilt and shame that come with being overweight. So my mobility is, oh, and then feeling like I'm slow when everyone else is fast. So, you know, you go shopping with your family or you have company come and you take them to a local site. You go on a field trip with a group. I just feel like I walked too slow. I needed to rest. My feet were sore. It just all the things. And I recognize that skinny people, <laughs> thin people have issues too. It's just, it just combines with the guilt and shame that you already have. I think I just realized I took the wrong road. Oh well, I will get there anyway. <laughs> All right, number one, number one is overall energy battles. You know, moving around, there, for every pound of extra weight on your body, it is four extra pounds of pressure on your knees. I mean, honestly, you're a weightlifter, so I've lost 70 pounds. I'm only allowed to pick up 20 pounds because of my back. I'm not allowed to pick up anything heavier than a gallon of milk. So you can imagine carrying around all this extra weight, how much it just wears on you. Uh, it's just terrible. So I love to work. I love to work on the house. I love to paint. I love, I'm not like a mechanical person. I don't use tools necessarily, but I do love to paint. I do love to declutter. I do enjoy cleaning as I've gotten older. I hated it when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I actually enjoy it. I love raking the lawn. I would even enjoy shoveling, I think. I mean, maybe not a whole driveway, but shoveling the walkways, I'm not against it. I, you know, whenever you're cleaning or decluttering or doing anything like that, it's like, it's therapy for me because you're immediately solving a problem and it looks better when you're done than when you started. So what's so frustrating is because of my limits, I'm always trying to get other people to do it who hate doing it or I have to do shorter spurts than I want to do. I might have the time to do it, but I just don't have the energy. So energy is such a big deal to me. I am so thrilled that I did find a program that works even without exercise. And 
I want to tell you about it and honestly I'm going to tell you about it once a month because I have met so many people that are just like me and I have over I am a health coach now for the program that I'm using I have mentors business coach mentors they have trained me and they continue to train me and I can pull them in whenever I know that I need more information or someone with more experience so I appreciate them so much and I have been thanked so many times for sharing this information on my channel by the people who are on my team with me we're losing it together even though I'm their coach and with over 20 clients everybody's losing weight and I have people who are like I can't lose weight I haven't lost weight on anything this is hopeless I can't do it and they're doing it and they're losing weight so I am going to share this monthly and do I profit from this yes I do I I do believe that my work is worth a wage I feel like when you work it's okay to get paid and I do work very hard for my clients I love every one of them I consider them all friends and I'm thankful just like here on YouTube I'm thankful to be in a business where I can get paid to serve wonderful beautiful friendly people that is a huge benefit so that's what makes it feel like a shameless promotion is that I am making money doing this I'm not getting rich I'll tell you that but I am making money doing this and but I am still going to share it everybody wants to focus on the food of this program they want to google it and I don't care what program you're on somebody's gonna have a problem with it and I want to tell you about it because it's not just about the food this program and I know and I've heard it too so many programs that were created by doctors nutritionists this program too was created by a heart surgeon who was tired of fixing problems on the surgeon on the surgeon's table that he felt like could have been fixed if he could have gotten to them when they were creating the problem so he teamed up with people that are in the know and they not only studied what would help someone lose weight but what keeps us from losing weight or what helps what creates the failure okay so this is a holistic approach this is a life change and when I say life change, when you use this program, you do not have a choice but to have a coach. You have a coach. You can ghost the coach, you can avoid the coach. I'm thankful I don't have people who are avoiding me or ghosting me, they're just right on it. And we meet weekly over the phone. We have a call every week. I'm thankful for that because they, looked at different programs and what is successful and what isn't and coaching is successful. Having accountability, having somebody who understands that can talk you through the struggles that you're having is super effective and I know it has been effective for me and then when that person chooses to join the business a lot of times it's because like me I had people on YouTube saying how are you losing the weight? You noticed I was losing weight and he wanted to know what I was doing. And so my sister talked to me, because she's my coach, and said, you know, I could coach them, but they trust you. And I decided to jump on for that reason. I didn't honestly even know how much I would make. I had nothing. I, I didn't know a whole lot when I made that decision, except she was right. And I wanted to be able to help people, and to get to help people work through a problem that I have had since I was 11 years old, when I am, 57 years old is the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life and I love it so much and I love that I have mentoring coaches so that I didn't have to worry about whether or not I would have enough information because I was still working the program so it's just been beautiful but anyways the coaching is definitely 
important. And then there are books that you receive. One is called the Life Book. And it is actually a workbook that's intended to take you a year to work through. There's questions that help you develop your why. Information and questions that help you to understand how you got to where you are, why you at where you are. And for me, that's so important. I've watched TV shows, whoops, there's my phone. I've watched TV shows like Oprah, where she says that she had to find out why she had the weight on her, why she was eating to cope. And I thought, how am I ever going to know? Like, I don't even know how to know. So this book has really helped me with that. There's questions you answer, it's interactive. There's podcasts that go with each of the, they're called elements, each of the elements. And the intention is that you'd be working through that work, that book, it's like this big, five minutes a day, and at five minutes a day, you'd finish the book in a year. And it's something you talk to your coach about. And for me, it's beautiful that I get to talk to the people I'm coaching about it because then, you know, I'm going through that book over 20 times at this point, and it'll be even more as I service and help more people. So you're going through that book over and over. And then if you're interested in nutrition facts and information, and it's something you would need later as you transition, um, there's also a book called Habits of Health. So everything is laid out for you. There's no guesswork. There's no counting. There's no, there's nothing. There's none of that. It just, it's very clear. This is what you're going to have. And I love that. And it's fast and it's efficient. It's effective. There's not any free foods, zero free foods. Why? Because we have to think about what we put in our body and it's going to tell you exactly what to put in your body. And then it's going to train you for when you're done with the program. So, um, as I said, over 20 clients are all losing weight. So you have the coaching, you have the mindset training, the pot free podcast is a free online community where you can talk to other people who are just like you. All the coaches are on there, or the coaches in my team are all on there too. And then finally, there is the food. And you are buying the food. For most people, there's 11 different programs. So when you have a free health assessment, what you're, what that is for is for me to hear your struggle, to hear, you know, how your health is going and to help you with the program that would best for you. And so that is what that health assessment is for. So most of us are going to be on the five and one. And so what that is, is you are eating every two to three hours to stabilize your insulin levels, to keep you in a state where you're burning fat instead of the simple carbohydrates that you were eating before. So it's a lower carbohydrate diet. It's higher than keto because they found that 27 grams of carbohydrates was not enough to maintain brain health. So it's about 100 grams a day of carbohydrates. All the foods have the exact same nutrients, probiotics, anti-inflammatories, the same carbs, protein, fat, did I say that? About the same calories within five or 10 calories each. So it doesn't matter what you pick. There's a large variety of foods to pick from. So it's giving you everything you need to fuel a body for a typical day without strenuous exercise. If you do strenuous exercise, there is a program also for you because you would need more calories than what's on the five in one plan. There is a sheet that you bring to your, can bring to your doctor and show them exactly what you're doing. And then they can tell you if they think it is a healthy switch for you. Then the last component that is one of the most important components, when you have hit your goal and you've been there for a few weeks, so you know it's not a fluke, it's steady, then we start you transitioning and we coach you through that entire transition. You do not give up coaching until you want to give up coaching. When you feel like you're ready, so let's just say you want to completely go off the grocery store shelves. 
we're gonna show you how to do that, how to eat, you'll still eat six times a day, every two to three hours, and we will give you all the information you need to make that something that fits your lifestyle and is accessible to you. There are some, and honestly most, who because they've been on the foods for so long and because they feel so good and they have so much energy, they choose to stay on a certain portion of that. Maybe three, the in-between snacks are using the foods. One of the, the biggest obstacles I feel for women, especially you know if they're moms, is first of all, if you live in a family, you have never added up how much it would cost to just feed you. So um, it feels expensive. For my clients who are either married with no children in the home or single, they tell me that they save money. First of all, there's zero food waste. You're measuring, you have one meal a day that you're making for yourself, we call it the lean and green, you're measuring for that meal. So you're not throwing anything away, you're eating everything. And all of the foods that you buy from Optavia, you're not eating half a bar, half a cup of soup, half an oatmeal and throwing the rest away. You're not drinking half a shake. Everything you buy, you eat. So there's zero waste. So there's a savings right there. Then, you know, the fuelings are well below if you were to do um, like, TV dinners, you know, the ones, I don't want to mention any brands because I don't want it to be like I'm dissing a brand, but you know, those meals that are for um, weight loss that you could buy in the frozen food section, they're cheaper than that, each of our meals. So, um, and they have literally everything you need. You don't need to supplement with vitamins or anything like that. So. Really, it's a lot more economical, but you're buying, the first month you buy a month's worth, and then you can buy however much or little you want. So you can buy as frequently as you want. Um, but you know, most of us don't see what it would cost to feed one person for a month. So it makes it feel more expensive. But I'm telling you, it would be worth it. In fact, I want to do a video where I plan out, I was gonna do it for my husband where he's not on plan, is what does it cost to feed one person for a month and do a video on that just to show that it's really not as much money as it looks. It just feels like a lot because you're not used to sectioning out food just for you. You haven't had to or it's been so many years since you were single and we're just buying for you. So, All right, I'm almost at the store now. I will show you what I bought. Hopefully I do get something. <laughs> Stay tuned. Here I am in the dressing room of Kohl's and I did end up liking these pants even though they're kind of crazy. These were a definite no. They were skinny pants and I did not like them at all. These I really liked because they were high-waisted. They were just way too long, which is what I'm trying to show you. I didn't really want to talk in there. And then this jacket, I just felt like it just didn't look right on me at all. It was a little bit too tight and a little bit too bulky. And here I am lamenting how long the pants are, but I do end up going with those pants. And the store was a hot mess. Oh my goodness. And I'm saying that there were no nice dresses. Now this sweater, even though the sleeves are really long on me. I love the color and I did buy them. And then this is the outfit I end up wearing to the Christmas party that evening. And it has a lace top, which I'm going to show you. You see how it's cut that way, but with the jacket over it, I'm really fine with it. Those pants are super comfortable because they're wide legged. And then I paired those crazy pants <laughs> with this green top and I'm wearing that to a much more relaxed Christmas party that I'm going to later on on Sunday. And so I tried it with the sweater I brought in so I knew I had more than one thing to wear with it. I hope this was encouraging to you. Remember as always, God loves you and I love you too and I can't wait to see you next time.